Hello folks and welcome to my YouTube channel. If you haven't subscribed already, please do and be part of this mental wealth community where we continue to help ourselves and each other. Happy days. Folks, if you don't know me, I'm Sheila. I'm a qualified counsellor, a comedian and a survivor of mental ill health. So today's show is going to be about depression called coming out but also it's going to be linked with empathy folks so my story then is literally about me coming out and it, we're looking at about five years ago when uh, just after i'd written my book the power of knowing you and i decided to uh, change my uh, comedy shows from sheila m comedy to actually sheila's mental health shows mental health theater shows and i decided to literally come out and to make it public that I'd had depression for decades and um, yeah and I decided to take that chance to come out and actually to say this because you can imagine folks me being a counsellor and uh, seeing clients for the last decade that uh, that was a massive risk I can tell you because there was that risk of people judging me saying well why would I go to her she has depression she hasn't fixed herself why would I go to her um, ironically the reverse has happened um, that because I speak so openly about it and because I manage it so well um, that that's why people tend to come to me which is fantastic folks um, and it was definitely the best thing that I ever did I, I decided to be very open and to accept that I have depression but that it doesn't define who I am and I needed to be okay with that first I needed to accept that first before other people could do the same because oftentimes we do lead by example. Now, as part of depression, folks, how we can help each other, and this is so important, is for us to have empathy, not showing sympathy, not talking down to people, but actually having empathy. And it is about all of us being okay with our vulnerability. So folks, nobody can do this better than the fabulous Brené Brown and her video on empathy. It's about three minutes long. Please have a look and I'll see you in a couple of minutes. Cheers. So what is empathy and why is it very different than sympathy? Empathy fuels connection, sympathy drives disconnection. Empathy, it's very interesting. Teresa Wiseman is a nursing scholar who studied professions, very diverse professions where empathy is relevant and came up with four qualities of empathy. Perspective taking, the ability to take the perspective of another person or, or recognize their perspective as their truth. Staying out of judgment, not easy when you enjoy it as much as most of us do. Recognizing emotion in other people and then communicating that. Empathy is feeling with people. And to me, I always think of empathy as this kind of sacred space when someone's kind of in a deep hole and they shout out from the bottom and they say, I'm stuck, it's dark, I'm overwhelmed. And then we look and we say, hey, and climb down. I know what it's like down here. And you're not alone. Sympathy is... Ooh, it's bad, uh-huh. Uh, no, you want a sandwich? Um, empathy is a choice, and it's a vulnerable choice, because in order to connect with you, I have to connect with something in myself that knows that feeling. Rarely, if ever, does an empathic response begin with at least. I had a, yeah. And we do it all the time because you know what? Someone just shared something with us that's incredibly painful and we're trying to silver lining it. I don't think that's a verb, but I'm using it as one. We're trying to put the silver lining around it. So I had a miscarriage. Oh, at least you know you can get pregnant. I think my marriage is falling apart. At least you have a marriage. <laughs> John's getting kicked out of school. At least Sarah is an A student. But one of the things we do sometimes in the face of very difficult conversations is we try to make things better. If I share something with you that's very difficult, I'd rather you say, I don't even know what to say right now. I'm just so glad you told me. 
Because the truth is, rarely can a response make something better. What makes something better is connection. Okay then, so I hope you have enjoyed that folks. As I said, uh, Brené Brown, an amazing woman, you know, the way that she has explained that. And I have to admit, holding my hands up here, um, even though I do couples therapy, that with my partner and I, I've often found that he'll say something negative and I'll say, well, at least, you know, at least you've, at least, whoo, absolutely I have to stop that and that's the thing folks you know yes I'm a counsellor you've got other professions out there you know all of us were the same you know I really don't believe anybody's the expert I think we're just all doing our best folks and all in this together okay you know what time it is it is time for yes okay saying of the week or advice um, so let's see, have I got the right box for start? I have. Let's see what we got, folks. Uh, please keep submitting your advice and your sayings because it's very helpful. Ah, oh, Paula, Paula da Silva. Paula, I hope you're well. And Paula says, worrying means you suffer twice. Wow, that's quite poignant, isn't it? Worrying means you suffer twice. That's so true, isn't it, folks? Because we have something that goes on and then if we choose to worry about it, well, we're suffering twice. We're suffering because of what happened and then we're suffering because we continue to worry about it. Wow, that's quite profound. Um, yeah, that is quite profound. So take it as you want, folks. Absolutely. Um, yeah, very, very interesting. That's really got me thinking. You can tell, Paula. Um, folks, I also want to mention before we do our last bit of the show is that I've written training on self-harm and suicide. So if any of you folks out there need some training around dealing with self-harm or suicidal thoughts or suicidal intent, then please get in contact with me through my website, folks. Um, also, Joe will put up a link, probably over here somewhere, um, for my show on suicide. And I'm highlighting this, folks, because as a result of this pandemic, that you have a lot of the knock-on effect where people are really struggling and are at a crisis point for some people where they're experiencing suicidal thought and suicidal ideation. Ideation, is that how you pronounce it? I'm not perfect. <laughs> but yeah, so having suicidal thoughts, suicidal intent, and this is about helping each other. So please know that there is a free resource that I've done with that online about suicide. And also that there's training that I can deliver online, folks. Really passionate about that. You know, I, I believe we all have to help each other. Um, okay, so thank you as always for watching. Let's see what we got. Okay, is it going to be a song? Is it going to be a dance? Is it going to be a popular tune? Who knows? It is a dance. Okay, um, not sure what sort of bra I've got on, but it needs to do the job. Um, let's see what we got lined up. Ah, okay, now I particularly like this tune. This is now I know you're gonna see how old fashioned I am with my CD, and I've got a CD player here. <laughs> <laughs> I was on a Zoom call recently and somebody was taking a mick out of me using the CD player but in the end it was my CD player that worked over everybody else's technology. So there. So yes I'm a bit old fashioned but I'm quite happy being old fashioned. Okay this is Saturday night. I want to dance with me. Yeah. What's the action again? We'll just make it work, will we? Come on you know you want to. One, two, three, but I've got to hold down my boobs. Okay, come on, do it with me. Thank you so much for watching. You have a great day.